While browsing through some of the old site of the day winners on awards, I stumbled upon this website that won back in October 2023. Funny thing is, I already had come across this site a while ago and ever since, the scroll animation it had has been sitting on my to-do list. In fact, I actually tried to recreate it a couple years ago but I couldn't quite crack it back then. It wasn't as straightforward as it looked. You can see the video container moves horizontally with your cursor and then as you scroll, it transitions vertically and perfectly snaps to fit the screen. And even during the transformation phase, it still allows that horizontal cursor based motion which back then felt like the trickiest part to figure out. But recently, when I revisited the site, I gave it another shot and this time I managed to recreate a version that feels pretty close to the original site. You can see it glides smoothly along the x-axis and as you scroll, it stretches out to fill the full width and height of the next section all while keeping that parallax movement alive until it locks into place. In this video, I'll walk you through exactly how to build this stunning scroll animation using GSAP and scroll trigger. If you find my work helpful, it would be really great if you can drop a like on the video and might subscribe as well if you haven't already. If you'd like to access the source code, you can check out the pro membership through the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's begin by setting up the basic HTML structure to match the layout of the original website. First up, the navigation bar. We'll split it into two main sections, one for the logo and another for the navigation links. I'll add a few placeholder links just to set up the structure. Moving on to the hero section, here I'm adding a simple h1 for the title and a div with the class name hero copy. Inside this div, I'll include two paragraph elements. These will serve as our little hero footer or scroll queue. Next, we have the intro section. I'll start by adding a container specifically for desktop screens. We'll also create a second identical container for mobile just to make things easier when we get to styling. This way, we can apply all animations only to the desktop version and keep the mobile version static. The mobile container will stay hidden on desktop screens and vice versa. Inside this video container, we'll need two parts. One is the video preview and the other is the video title. For the preview, I'll add an inner wrapper. This will help later on when we want to add a border radius since we'll be embedding a Vimeo video using an iframe. Now I'll paste in the Vimeo iframe link. The settings include autoplay, muted audio, looping and a few other properties just to make sure it plays smoothly and avoids any browser corresponding messages, especially on Chrome. Next, we move on to the video title. These will be just simple placeholder texts for now. Then, I'll duplicate this entire structure for mobile, same layout, same content, just wrapped in a different container. This will help us avoid dealing with too much custom positioning or responsive headaches. And finally, we have a short outro section where I've added some placeholder text to wrap things up at the end of the page. So that's the basic HTML setup. Let's move on to the styling part now. Let's start by resetting the default styles. We'll remove all the margins and paddings and set the box sizing to border box to keep things consistent throughout the layout. Next, I'm going to style the body with a clean font, a dark text color and a light neutral background. I'll also make sure to hide any horizontal overflow so the layout doesn't break with side scrolling. For the headings, I'll keep the font size large and bold to give them a strong presence. Paragraphs will allow a smaller font weight but with a slightly smaller size. I'll style all the links to remove the underline and use a clean white color. They'll also have a slightly larger font and medium font weight so they stand out in the nav. Now let's set up the navigation bar. I'll position it fixed to the top so it stays visible while scrolling. It will span the full width of the screen and have a generous padding for spacing. We'll use Flexbox to space out the logo and the navigation links evenly. To make it visually pop over different backgrounds, I'm applying a mix blend mode of difference. A higher Z index ensures the nav always stays on top. Inside the nav, we'll place the links inside a flex container and add some spacing between each item. For each section of the page, I'll make sure it takes up the full width and height of the screen. We'll also add some padding to keep things nicely spaced out. In the hero section, I'm using a vertical flex layout. We'll push the content down a bit using top padding and space everything out using justify content. The main heading inside the hero will use a very large font size based on the viewport width. I'll slightly shift it to the left to adjust the font spacing. I'm also transforming the text to uppercase and tightening the spacing to give it a bold modern look.
for the hero footer, I'm using a flexbox layout that places the scroll text at the bottom right. Finally, we have the outro section. Here, I'm simply centering some text to both vertical and horizontal using flexbox. Now let's move on to the intro section. This section will hold our animated video container. I'll start by creating a desktop version of the container. Later, we'll build a mobile version separately to make things responsive and easy to manage. In the desktop container, I'm using a transform to scale it down and shift it upward. We'll animate this later using GSAP. For now, I'm setting up with a flex layout and some spacing between the video and the title. For the title, I'll use the same font size and font weight as the other text. Now let's handle the mobile. We are having another container with the exact same structure that we'll use for the mobile. The video preview will have an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, rounded corners and hidden overflow that gives us a nice clean frame for the embedded video. I'll make the iframe take up the full space and disable pointer events, that way it doesn't interrupt the scroll based animations. At the bottom of the CSS, I'm adding a media query for screens below 900 pixels wide. In the responsive layout, I'll reduce the padding on nav and sections for better spacing. I'll also adjust the hero section to push the content to the bottom and add some gaps between the elements. The heading size will be slightly reduced. For the video, I'll completely hide the desktop container and show the mobile version instead. The mobile container will use a simple column layout with light spacing and that's the complete CSS setup. Now we are ready to dive into the animations and bring this layout to life. First, I'm importing three libraries we'll be using, Lenis for smooth scrolling, GSAP for animations and scroll trigger which lets us link those animations to our scroll progress. I'm also registering the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP so we can use it later in our timeline. Then I'm awaiting for the DOM to load before running any of our code just to make sure all the elements we want to animate are available. Now we only want this animation to run on larger screens so I'm adding a simple check to make sure the window width is at least 900 pixels. Next, we'll set up Lanis to enable smooth scrolling on the page. Next, I'm selecting the video container for the desktop. This is the main element we'll be animating. And then I'm grabbing all the paragraph tags inside the video title since we'll be animating their font sizes as a part of the scroll transition. This part is fairly standard. You can find the exact setup code in the Lanis documentation. We are not doing anything custom here, just the basic integration. After that, I'm defining some breakpoints. These are based on different screen widths and they help us adjust the starting vertical position and the movement sensitivity dynamically. For example, smaller screens will start the video container slightly higher and use a smaller movement multiplier while larger screens will scale those values up. And that's everything for this setup. Now that we have defined our breakpoints, we need a way to choose the right values depending on the user screen's width. So I'm creating a function that checks the current window width and loops through each breakpoint. As soon as it finds a matching one, where the width is less than or equal to the max width, it returns the corresponding vertical translation and movement multiplier. These values are going to control how far up the video container starts and how much it moves horizontally in response to mouse movement. If none of the breakpoints match, let's say the screen is wider than all of them, then we'll just return a default set of values that work well for large screens. Once we have those initial values, 
I am storing them in a constant so we can reuse them throughout the animation. Now I am setting up an object to manage the entire animation state. This object keeps track of everything that's going to change during the animation. We'll start by tracking the scroll progress which will range from 0 to 1. Then we store the initial vertical translation from our earlier calculation in a separate value for the current translation which we'll update as the user scrolls. We are also including the movement multiplier, current scale of the video container and its font size. All of these will gradually change based on scroll and mouse position. Then we have two values for the mouse, the target position and the current position. These will let us create a smooth horizontal animation that follows the user's cursor in a nice fluid motion. By putting all these values in one object, it becomes really easy to update them in one place and use them across different parts of our animation logic. Now we want our animation to stay responsive even when the user resizes their browser window. So I'm setting up an event listener that runs every time the window gets resized. Inside that, we are calling our earlier function to get fresh values based on the new screen width. We update the animation state with the new starting Y position and the movement multiplier. That way, the animation still looks centered and natural on different screen sizes. We'll also check if the user hasn't scrolled yet, meaning scroll progress is still zero. If that's the case, we reset the current translate Y value to match the new screen size as well. This keeps the layout visually correct when resizing happens at the top of the page. Now let's move on to the actual scroll animation. I'm creating a GSAP timeline that's linked to scroll using scroll trigger. We are telling scroll trigger to watch the intro section. The animation begins when the top of the section hits the bottom of the viewport and it ends when the top of the section reaches 10% from the top of the viewport. The scrub option is enabled which means the animation progress is directly tied to scroll progress. As the user scrolls, the values update in real time smoothly and frame by frame. Inside the onUpdate callback function, we are first storing the current scroll progress. This value goes from 0 to 1, where 0 means the animation hasn't started yet and 1 means it's fully complete. Next, I'm interpolating the vertical translation using GSAP's utility function. We smoothly transition from the initial Y position up to 0, so the container slides down into place as we scroll. Then, we interpolate the scale value from 0.25 up to 1. This gives the effect of the video container zooming in and filling the screen as we scroll down. We are also shrinking the spacing or gap between the video and the title. That goes from 2 to 1 to create a tighter layout as everything zooms in. Now comes the font size animation which we are splitting into two phases. In the first 40% of the scroll, we gradually shrink the text size from 80 pixels to 40 pixels. We do that by dividing the scroll progress by 0.4 which gives us a percentage just for that first part of the timeline. Once the scroll passes 40%, we move into the second phase. We calculate how far we are into that remaining 60% by subtracting 0.4 value from the scroll progress then dividing by 0.6. In this phase, we scale the font size down again from 40 pixels to 20 pixels giving us a nice progressive shrinking effect that doesn't happen all at once. By splitting the animation into two stages, we are creating an illusion that the font size isn't really changing and is staying static. And that completes the scroll driven part of the animation. Now we are adding an extra layer of interactivity by making the animation respond to mouse movement. I am setting up a mouse move event listener on the document. Every time the user moves their mouse, we calculate how far the cursor is from the center of the screen. We take the current X position of the mouse, divide it by the full window width and subtract 0.5. This gives us a value that ranges from minus 0.5 to 0.5. Then we multiply it by 2 so we end up with a range from minus 1 to 1. This value becomes our target horizontal movement and we'll use it to shift the video container left or right based on how far the user moves their cursor. Next, I'm creating a recursive animate function. This function will run on every animation frame thanks to request animation frame and it will update the container style in real time. First, I check if the screen is too small, under 900 pixels because we don't want this animation to run on mobile. If it is, we just skip the animation completely. Then I extract all the properties we need from the animation state like scale, mouse positions, vertical translation, font size gap and the movement multiplier. Now comes the important calculation. We are figuring out how much horizontal movement to apply based on the current scale of the container. We multiply the movement multiplier by 1 minus scale. This means the smaller the container, the more responsive it is to the cursor. As it grows larger and fills the screen, we want it to stop moving horizontally so we gradually reduce that effect as it scales up. Then we check if the scale is still under 0.95. If it is, we calculate how far the container should move left or right based on the mouse position. Otherwise, once it's almost fully scaled, we lock the movement to zero so it feels grounded in place. 
Now, instead of jumping instantly to the new mouse position, we interpolate smoothly toward it. This creates a slight delay or easing effect, making the movement feel fluid and natural. After that, we update the container CSS transform property with the new translate Y, translate X, and scale values. This makes the entire container shift up or down, move left or right, and scale in or out all at once. We also update the spacing between the elements by setting the gap dynamically and finally, we loop through all the video title elements and apply the current font size to each one. This ensures the text scales down nicely as the container transitions in. At the very end of the function, we call request animation frame again to keep the animation loop running. Then we kick things off by calling animate function once and that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.